So we're going to shift gears then to start learning about WordPress. It's software to create a website, just like my example here, SWCCIS. You can use it to create standard sort of business card types of websites that don't have a lot of content. You can create more advanced kinds of websites like e-commerce websites, websites that you can sell stuff. You can do websites that are advanced with chat features and such. WordPress can do it all, basically. And so the way we're going to handle this is we're going to use the free WordPress software. So let's go ahead and open up your web browser. One of the things about WordPress is that it is, it's, it's web-based. You don't download anything to your computer and you don't install it on your computer. You use it on the web. You use it live on the web. So let's go to the web browser and let's go to wordpress.com. WordPress.com. Now, briefly, there's also WordPress.org. .com and .org. Um, we're going to use the .com because it tells us right here, create your new website for free. WordPress is the best place for your personal blog or business site. And yes, we're, we're going to go through this together. We're going to create a free site on WordPress.com, but there will be a couple of little drawbacks. One is, let's say I wanted a website for my business. I wanted victorsbakery.com. Well, if we go through WordPress.com, I'm going to end up with victorsbakery.wordpress.com. I'm going to create a website that has the WordPress branding. Uh, the free one. If I pay, then I'll get the one that's simply got my name. But just to learn WordPress to get started off, I think this will be fine. We're going to have the name of our company .wordpress.com. That's one of the drawbacks. The other drawback is that you can't use what are known as plugins. Plugins are like mini apps that give your website more features. So out of the box, WordPress, you, you can't sell products. You can't have some of these advanced features without a plugin. But with WordPress.com, you cannot install plugins. So those are two drawbacks. Uh, but for us at this in this class, it's not a big deal. WordPress.org is the one that is completely open that you can put your full name, victorsbakery.com, you can use any plugins you want and other features. The downside with this one is that on, on this one, this is the not free version. This is the version that you have to install it on a, on a web server. And that's not something we're going to get to in this class. We would get to that in the other class, CIS 255. So WordPress.com is like the full featured, full power WordPress, but it's a little bit of a setup. And, it, and that's the one that's not free. We're going to use the uh, WordPress.com, which is the totally free one, but slightly limited. So it's going to be pretty straightforward here. Um, we're on, we should be on WordPress.com. Let's click the big blue button that says Create a Website. What's also cool about WordPress.com is that we are able to create as many websites as we want. We're going to create an account, and then we're going to create a, a business, a fake business if you want, and then we can create as many extra WordPress sites as we want. The first thing that it's asking me here, step 104, let's get started, choose a theme. You can always switch to a different theme later. This is another great thing about WordPress. You set up your site, you choose a design, and then later on you, you want to have a different design, you're tired of it or you just want to change things up, you can uh, change the theme pretty easily, and all your content automatically uh, travels from one design to, other, to the other. You might have to edit things a little bit, but it's not as difficult as classic ways to do it like, Word, uh, like a Dreamweaver. I have a bunch of possible options here, Boardwalk, Cubic, Eden. You might not see the same ones as me. That's okay if you don't see any that look like mine. That's fine. But if you see the one that, that's called Minnow, like mine right here, Minnow, I'm going to select that. If you don't see Minnow, you can select something else. If you don't like how Minnow looks, you can select something else. But if you see Minnow, I recommend click on that one. 
step 204. Let's find a domain. Choose a custom domain or a free .wordpress.com address. So it's going to tell you here that if you get example.wordpress.com, it's free. If you want example.com, it's going to be starting at $18 per year. We're not going to need to do this. We're going to use the totally free one. Um, but to be full featured and more professional, you do want the domain with your name, and that's the not free version. And it is the cost of doing business. In any event here, it says enter a domain or keyword. We can make this up. Uh, we've been making these websites throughout, I mean these social media accounts throughout the whole semester. Uh, hopefully you've been using that social media in the service of a website or a concept. So here let's choose a name for your website. You can make it up, you can delete it later, you can change it later, you can make up as many as you want. But let's say I want victorsbakery.com. It is telling me that victorsbakery.com is available, but it's $18 a year, and I don't want to spend on it. And so what I have other options, victorsbakerycom.wordpress.com. Whatever you want to use here will work. Go for the free one, of course. I'm just going to choose this one. I can change it later. I can delete it if I want. But I'm going to go with that one, and I'll click Select. So step three or four, pick a plan that's right for you. We've got the free one, the premium, and the business. The free one is all that we need because it's free forever. The second one is $99 per year. This one is giving you more features, features that we don't really need at the moment. And then the next one is $299 a year. It gives you all the previous options as well as uh, the ability to sell products or services, unlimited themes. Honestly, these two I think are way overpriced. If you take the other class, in there I talk about recommendations of where to buy your website because when you do get professional it's not really gonna cut it to have victorsbakery.wordpress.com you want victorsbakery.com and that ranges in price uh, but these prices right here I think they're very expensive for what they give you so I never have dealt with these I think these prices just are just too expensive to even deal with if you deal with some of these other companies for $300, you can have service for like five years. And this one is $300 for one year. So all we're going to do is select the free plan. Click on the first one. What are the, uh, I'm telling you, just uh, try to step. Domain name? On the previous step, they were only selling the domain name, yes. Mm -hmm. The name of your website. Mm -hmm. and then on this one, they're selling the hosting. Pretty expensive, three hundred and twenty dollars for one year. Yeah. So just select a free one, the first one here. You want to add an email address so that you can get verified. Uh, if you don't get verified, you can still use WordPress.com, but if you get verified, you'll have more more power and more features. So put in an email address, a real email address for you to for you to uh, access. Username, this is a little confusing. Uh, as I said, you can create a WordPress account and then create multiple websites. You log into all of them with the same username. And so you might think, okay, I'm going to call this admin but this is a name that is already taken by someone on WordPress.com. So this name, perhaps set it as the same name of your website. A moment ago I created victorsbakerycom.wordpress.com. So I'm going to make that my username. You can try to choose any username you want here. The thing is, of course, write it down so that you don't forget it but I'm going to use the name of my website as the username. 
and then you want to add a password. And then there's the create my account button, but before that it says, by creating an account, you agree to our fascinating terms of service. I haven't read it recently. This is one of these things that no one no one reads, but everyone agrees to. Uh, and uh, basically, it's saying you know you're not going to use uh, you're not going to use WordPress.com services in an abusive manner or for illegal things and you know standard stuff. If you don't agree to that, then you don't have to create the account. But um, it's standard stuff. Click create my account. If that worked, then at the top it's going to say, please verify your email address. You can do that a little bit later. Um, because in order for you to actually publish anything for people to see, you need to verify. Uh, you can do that later. They sent an email to your account. Um, but here what we've got is a bunch of suggestions of what you could do, creating a page, selecting themes, etc. I'm going to skip this for the moment because you create a WordPress.com account and then it logs you in and the screen has these various buttons at the top. What I would suggest is, let's click at the very top left where it says My Site. You're going to see some info on the left side. And, for example, at the top left, you click on My Site, and at the top left, it says Add a New WordPress. So you can create as many WordPress accounts as you want, or websites actually on your main account. And I've got this one, uh, victorsbakery.com.wordpress.com. That's my address. I have a real website now. How does that actually look? If you click on View Site, then it'll show it'll show you your site how people might see it so there it is pretty basic there's nothing there yet but I have this website where I can start to add content and customize it and such so let's just pause for a moment did everyone get a chance then to create this WordPress account and you at this point or so, anyone need any help? Are you going to give us an assignment to this, Victor? Yes, eventually, but not. It's okay if I show you what I have, or ah, uh, yeah. Because I don't have, I just, no, I don't have nothing right now. But I, I have a, but the current website I just have, you know. Because I already know how to use. Yeah, I think yeah, I think it'll work. If okay. you have some experience already, it'll work. Uh, if you're new to it, then that'll work also. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So the way WordPress works is on the left side we've got this my site, and we've got visit site, uh, view site, stats, plan, etc. A section on publish personalize, configure, settings, and so forth. So this is one version of the WordPress software. This is the free version. With the paid version, you have the same sorts of features, but a little bit different. What I want to do here is, if you click on my site on the left and click on uh, themes, customize, you will get the ability to change the design, change various aspects of the design of your theme. Because if everyone can choose Minnow, then it looks the same for everyone. You want a unique website. So I click that Customize button, 
and it tells me at the top, you are customizing Victor's Bakery. My currently active theme is Minnow, which I can change, but I won't change it yet. And we have custom design, site title, colors, fonts, etc. So pretty straightforward, we have all of these little things that we can change about our site. Each site is going to vary a little bit depending on the theme that you got and such. So I'm going to take a look. What's under custom design? Okay, see the custom design is not free, so I'm going to skip that. Site title, tagline, and logo. So this is stuff that I can change. Uh, instead of it having that text up there, I can write my own site title and tagline, and I can upload a logo. So if I had some of this handy, like a logo, I could upload that. But let's say I'm going to change the name of my title up here because it doesn't look quite readable. Victor's Bakery. And so it's going to look like that. Instead of the words run together, it's going to look more readable. Tagline. San Diego Bakery. Depending on the theme, some things might be obvious or not. I wrote this tagline, but I don't see it in the design. It looks like that on my particular design, it doesn't show that tagline, which is okay, because uh, every theme's a little different. I can preview what does this look like on different devices down here. What does it look like on a desktop computer? What does it look like on a tablet, on a phone? This is known as responsive web design. It responds. Your web design responds to the kind of monitor you have. This is a very cool modern feature of a website. And it's built into WordPress. Let's say I'm going to add a logo. There's a few pictures on my computer. Just for fun, I'm going to borrow a picture. Selected the picture, set as logo. Hmm. Again, I don't see it, but maybe I have to fully... At the top, I've got save and publish. Oh, there it is. So I saved it, and then there's, there's that picture. So. I changed my title, I added a logo, and it appeared on the top. So I'm not going to go through every one of these screens, but they should make sense. There's a spot for me to change site title and such, background color, fonts, menus, and widgets are a little more advanced. We can talk about those later. But let me take a quick look at background colors. This is pretty basic. I could put a background picture. So more customization. The more I customize it, the less it'll look like someone else's site. It'll look more unique for me. So you can customize that as much as you want a little bit later. And again, under menus, and widgets, those are a bit advanced, so uh, we won't get to them today, most likely. But I just changed my theme a little bit. Save and publish. I may change it so I clicked at the top, save and publish, and then I'll click the X. There's my site. So it started off a certain way. I've customized it a little bit. Now it's a little bit more unique. Any questions so far?
So the cool thing about WordPress is I can create this website. It can be a blog type of website. It can be a static type of website or a combination of the two. But the way that WordPress um, defines content here under publish, we have blog posts and pages. So you often hear the concept of pages and posts in WordPress. A page is a screen that doesn't change too much, like an about screen, a contact screen, um, product screen, portfolio maybe? So those would be pages, screens that don't change much. Blog posts then are screens that would change, like if we had a blog. And so I think maybe for the first thing that I'll do here, because this says nothing found, under blog posts I'm going to select add. See, uh, you should see on the left side, publish blog posts add. Because I just created my account and I haven't verified it yet, whatever I write here, I might not have the ability to publish it yet for the world to see because I haven't verified. And that's okay, I can do it a little later. But I can still write stuff, save it as a draft, and then come back to it. So we've got this editor with a few options on the left. Don't worry about this yet. But we've got a title area, the main content area. We've got a few buttons here for editing. It's not as powerful as Word, let's say, where you can make a lot of design in Word. You've got these options of adding a picture and bullet points and such. Not too much. Then at the very end, on the right side, we have Toggle Advanced. You turn that on and you get a few more options. Changing font color, for example, indenting, adding symbols, there's your undo and your redo. Because we can edit this as many times as we want or delete it. Let's say we're going to write our first blog post today uh, where we just introduce ourselves um, on our site here. So a title. I'm going to write introduction. And then take a moment to write something here of an introduction. Maybe yourself, your business, your, your brand, anything you want. Take a moment, write a couple of sentences here. You have these options, bullet points and so forth, pictures. So just a Let's try that for a moment. Write some, write some stuff here. How did you get there? On the left side, you can just click on. Um, it said add post. Right here, my site blog post add. You don't have, you, you don't have that screen. Let's do that. Let's take a couple of minutes. Write a post. This is going to be a blog post, just an introduction. Maybe what you learned, what you're learning, what you want to learn, just something quick. And then we'll, we'll talk in more detail.
All right, so just uh, briefly here, what I've done is written a little, little bit of text. I did some italics and bold, did some bullet points and put a picture, so basic stuff. And on the surface, it looks like you can't do too much in WordPress. There's not a lot of settings here, but actually there is something very powerful here. If you notice, on the top right, there's a tab that says visual and a tab that says HTML. If you click HTML, this exposes the underlying HTML code. So if you know any HTML, you can write the code yourself. You can change things yourself. Does anyone in this class know any HTML code or CSS code? If you don't, that's one of the highly useful things to, to, to learn uh, when you deal with web design. It allows you to edit a website very powerfully. Um, so, for example, right now when I'm creating this blog post, there's no way for me to add like a background color behind my text. There's no button. There's no button that says make this background yellow. I can still make that a yellow background if I write a little bit of code. So let's try this just for fun. Uh, whatever you've written here, click on the HTML tab at the top right, and on one of these sentences, let's say I want to make that sentence right here, what I learned, what I want to learn. I want to make that have a yellow background. So we'll write a little bit of HTML and CSS code. Let's try this. Uh, we're going to type the less than symbol. The less than symbol is shift comma. So if you look on the keyboard, shift comma. And then uh, the greater than symbol, so you get this less than, this greater than, these angle brackets. And in, in between the angle brackets, I'm going to write div. So at the end of this line, then, I'm going to write the same thing, less than, greater than, div. But the difference is, I'm going to add a slash before div. This is HTML code. HTML is hypertext markup language. It just means it's a computer language where you mark things. So between this div and this div, we've marked, or between these tags, these, this code, we've marked that what I wrote here, what I want to learn. I've marked it as something, as a div. It's a division. We're going to divide it from the rest of the document. And notice it's got a slash div. Kind of like right, what I've got right here, ul slash ul. Maybe we don't know what that is, but this is a pair of div of tags. This div slash div is a pair. I'm going to back up to the first div again right here. And right after the, the letter v, press space, I'm still inside of the angle brackets. Right, less than, greater than, and I put a space right there inside of these angle brackets. And here's where the where the trick comes in. I'm going to write style equals quote end quote. So I've got two quote marks right there. And so what I'm going to do is change the style of this division. Right now it's plain black and white but I want to change the style, so I've divided it from the rest. I'm going to change the style, and in the quotes I can say how am I going to change it. I'm going to say background-color, colon, and then choose, choose a color. Let's say yellow, semicolon. So that is HTML and CSS code. It doesn't look yellow yet, until I press the tab to go back to visual, and then that code will be translated if I switch back from HTML to visual, yellow.
So there's no button in WordPress here for me to do that. But if I know a little HTML code like this, and I have a background color, and I can make almost any change if I know the code. So that's another reason why WordPress is very powerful. It guides you and it helps you, and very quickly you can create stuff, but if you still know some of these codes, you'll be able to do things that are more powerful. And that's the code right there, div slash div, and then style equals quote, end quote, background dash color colon space yellow, semicolon, now it's yellow. So in other classes, we talk much more in HTML. Not really in this class. It's not the big focus. But this is one of the things that if you're thinking about getting into the world of web design and such, one of the things really you need to do is learn HTML. And we offer various classes uh, here at Southwestern about that. One is CIS123, and another one is CIS152. Those two classes, especially 152, focus a lot on HTML code, and so if you're versed in that, you can be pretty valuable. What I'll also say that is if you want to learn on your own a little bit, you can go to the website w3, w3 schools uh, dot com, w3 schools dot com, and for free there's a whole sequence of learn CSS, learn HTML, learn JavaScript, all of these web languages. You go lesson by lesson, there's then quizzes at the end, you pass the quizzes and you get a certificate. So a free education in one of the foundations of, of web design. If you know this, if you know HTML and such, uh, you'll go pretty far. So I like this site a lot because you can learn all of these concepts step by step, take quizzes, get certificates, and it makes you more valuable. So if you want to learn from us at Southwestern College, CIS 123 and 152 are good. Or if you want to learn on your own, w3schools.com. So on my project here, if, uh, if it lets you, I'm going to click Publish. I see Preview and I see Publish. I'm going to try to publish it. If yours says Publish, also go ahead and publish it. So it says Post Published. And on the top left, I can click My Site view site and my post would appear there but maybe on mine it hasn't because I haven't verified my email yeah probably because I haven't verified my email so you do want to verify your email so you can actually see your posts and imagine that my post appeared there that's I normally would because I would have verified my address so we're going we're gonna to end it, uh, in just a moment because the thing that I wanted to accomplish today was to create this free account. This is the tip of the iceberg, the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Um, WordPress, it lets us create websites, add pictures and content pretty quickly. It's very powerful. What we looked at was, again, just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. Um, we're going to look at more WordPress because Let's say we created a whole website in WordPress. We want people, we want traffic for it, we want it to get found. That's everything we've been learning in the class. Tweet about it, post about it on Facebook, make a, a, Snapchat, a Snapchat post about it, a snap, um, etc. So if we had a website, we could then advertise it. Using WordPress, we can make a website. We're not going to become pros in WordPress in this class. It's not. It's not what this class is about. CIS 255, the class next semester, is. Uh, we can get pretty powerful there. But um, what the account that we created today, you want to remember your login information. At the very top right, you've got that little person. Click on that. You can sign out. 
because when you when we come back next time we're going to log back into our account we're not going to create a new one we're going to log back in so hopefully you saved your information i'm going to sign in next time i need to look into it but i think we don't have class on wednesday um, i think they give us the day off on wednesday evening i have to double check um, but be on, be on the lookout for an email assume that we will have class until I send the email. I'll, as soon as I find out, I'll send the email, and we might not have class. Any questions on anything we looked at today? Okay, so uh, we'll have some lab time. In case you want to explore WordPress a little bit more, we'll look at it together next time. When we come back next time, we'll work on more WordPress.